This is Mountaintop History, a podcast telling the story of Monticello and all who lived and labored at this plantation. My name is Kyle Childson. Last week, we discussed Jefferson's architectural style, the buildings and ideas that it was based upon, and its influence on American architecture. But sometimes there are smaller details and stories that get lost in those bigger conversations. In order to get a sense of what I mean, let's spend some time on the third floor of the house. Probably the most famous feature of this floor, if not the whole house, is the dome. It's octagonal in shape and topped by an oculus glass window. It seems that Jefferson had some difficulty in procuring the original glass that would have been in the space, as the first shipment from the Boston Glass Works shattered along the way to Monticello. Oftentimes on tours of the dome room, visitors imagine that such a grand and spacious area must have been used for entertainment, like a ballroom. There are only a few historical documents that can help explain how the space was used, but it seems that it was rarely utilized. Margaret Bayard Smith visited the room in 1809 and wrote afterwards that it is a noble and beautiful apartment. It was not furnished and being in the attic story is not used, which I thought a great pity as it might be made the most beautiful room in the house. Just off the dome room, however, is a small nook with a fun story. Anyone who has looked at the back of a nickel has seen the half circle window for this small room. According to one of the granddaughters, Virginia, she and her sister Cornelia used this room as a private space for reading and writing. She wrote, breathing through a broken pane of glass and some wide cracks in the floor, I have taken possession with the dirt daubers, wasps and humble bees and do not intend to give it up to anything but the formidable rats, which have not yet found out this fairy palace. And speaking of rats, just down the hallway on the third floor are some attic doors with cat holes toward the bottom. Virginia's letter implies that there were certainly rats at Monticello and paint analysis tells us that the holes are as old as the house. One might imagine that some Monticello Mausers use these holes frequently to catch their prey. This has been another edition of Mountaintop History, a collaboration between WTJU and the Thomas Jefferson Foundation. Mountaintop History is also supported by a major grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. To learn more and to plan your next visit, go to monticello.org.